Hi everyone, it's Bev DeBono and I have a great fast and fun layout for us to do. This layout is showcasing the Creative Memories frame border punches. Now, not all border punches are frame punches. What makes those different is that on the frame punch, it usually pick, uses up a whole two inch section of the punch. And also Creative Memories has given us the markings on the side of the shelf where we can, there is a silver line midway through that section here on the side of the shelf. So we know where to make our frame. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, usually we put our paper here in the black line by the words Creative Memories. And to make frames, we're gonna put our paper at the line that's on the shelf. So if you're not sure if you have a frame punch, um, Creative Memories had quite a few frame punches that have come out in the last couple of years. These are the ones that are um, that have come out that were considered that are considered frame punches. The petal punch, the Baroque frame, arch border, geometric, snowflake, which is what I used for this one, dollop arch, spider web, which is what I used for this one cloud frame and damask flourish, which I'm gonna to use tonight. Now, everyone always asks me about the Mandela punch because it's such a beautiful punch and you would think that it would be a frame punch. It's not really um, supposed to be a frame punch, but I have a workaround for it that it can be a frame punch for us tonight if you want to use the Mandela punch. When you take a look at the back of the punch, you see the repeat on this punch is not two inches. So for a two inch punch, the frame punch, you get five punches across. With the mandala, you're only gonna get four. And if you want to use the mandala punch, what you need to do is to make your own line on the shelf. And what I did was I made my own line with a Sharpie pen going at the very tip on the shelf, that very tip of that mandala, the tip of that flower, down to the bottom on the shelf. So I made my own line right here with a Sharpie. And that will give me the repeat that I need to do this pattern. With the regular frame punches from Creative Memories, that line is already made for you on the uh, shelf of the punch. So you see this one has that line already on the punch itself on both sides, as well as the the lines that you normally use when you do a punch. This is the Damas Flourish punch, and I'm going to be using that one tonight to make um, my cage. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a background paper. And believe it or not, I am going to use a white. I don't always use a white for these, but I really want to do the white because I want to showcase the punch. And I'm going to use another paper as my inside base. And I'm going to use one that has a very thin stripe. Now, I like to use very thin stripes. And the reason is, and you'll see I use thin stripes I use it as the background on this one. I used a thin stripe on the spider web on the spider web itself. It was a thin stripe. I think that it gives it some interest as opposed to just using 
solid on top of solid. So I'm going to spice it up by using a thin stripe, a tonal, as my inside base. And then you're going to need some colors to do your mats for the inside of your page. So this is what it will end up looking like, but with a different punch. Okay, so let's get started with the frame punch. And to use the frame punch, we're going to take our paper, and this is my um, this is my outside base. I'm just going to lay that here on my on my base. I'm then going to take the paper that I'm punching the inside frame with. And I'm going to put that into my punch, but I'm not going to put it here where we usually put our papers when we punch a border. I'm going to put it, I'm going to start on this line here that's on the shelf. So it's a midpoint. It's the line that's on the shelf of your punch. And I think you can see that it's that line that's um, on the shelf. Okay, so I'm just going to switch this so that my punch debris will go, it will be easier to, to take off. Okay, so line it up. Your paper goes all the way to the back of the punch and line it up to the line that's on the shelf of your punch. So you see it's outside of the punch. And we're going to now punch, punch it. Okay, move your paper down and line up your design to the to, until it matches the picture that's on your shelf. Okay, so I'm going to line up my design so that it lines up exactly to the blue design on the shelf. And I'm going to punch that again. Move it down again so that it lines up to your design. And if you're using a frame punch, we're going to punch it five times. If you're using the mandala punch, you only punch it four times. Okay, so now this is what you have. You have five punches and you have these little one inch pieces at the end. And that's how it's supposed to look. Now look at this punch debris here. And depending on the punch that you use, sometimes you'll get these cool looking little uh, pieces, these, these little pieces here. And what I've done is a lot of times I just take them if it's something that you can use. And on this one, I'm gonna clip it right there in the middle so that if you want later on, you can use them as frames for the outside of your mats or your photos. Look how cute those are. Isn't that cute? And you can use them as designs on the, you know, outside of your mats or your photos. Okay, so not every frame punch will do this, but this particular one does. And so I always like to show you things that you can do with um, the pieces that you have so that, you know, you might want to hold, if you're using the Demis Flourish, you might want to hold on to these fun little pieces. Okay, so we have one side punch. Now we're going to turn our paper to the right, or you can turn it to the left either way. But now we're going to get that little, we're going to start with this little one inch hangover piece here. And that end point is what's going to go on your shelf, on the line on your shelf. Okay, so I'm going to do it on the left side this time, so you can see. All right, so this little one inch piece here 
I'm going to start it on the line on my shelf. Make sure your paper's all the way towards the back. Punch it. And now look, you have that little piece. Oh, it's still in there. There we are. You have these little one inch pieces that come off. Those are cute for other things. But look what happened at when we did that. It made a beautiful corner. And that is why this is a, a frame punch. Okay, so let's do the second one. We're gonna put that in again. Just have your punch match your picture on the shelf. Match your picture on the shelf. And you can do this either on the right or the left. Some people like to punch on the left side. Some people like to punch on the right side. Um, you could use it both ways. And move it down and punch. You're going to punch a total of five times. Um, we're not punching all the way over to the end. We're leaving that little one inch strip. Remember, if you're using the Mandela, you're only punching four times. Okay, and we have the same thing now. We have that little one inch strip at our end. Okay, turn your paper again. Clear out your debris here. You don't want to punch on top of the debris because these are very delicate punches and you can clog up underneath and we don't want to do that to the, to the punch. Okay, and we're going to now insert that little one inch piece all the way to the line on the shelf. Line your paper all the way up to the back. Punch it five times. You're going to get that little one inch strip and keep moving it down until you, you're going to match that picture on the shelf. And line that up. You're going to punch it five times unless you're using the Mandela and then you're only punching four. But it makes a beautiful frame all on its own. And that's because of the two inch repeat of the pattern. It's just beautiful. That underneath so you could see it. Hmm, maybe I should use the bronze underneath instead of, <laughs> maybe I'll switch my colors. Okay, and then turn it the last time and now you still have your, your last two. And this time I'm actually I'm going to do it on the right. Line this extra piece up to the line on your shelf. You have that little one inch piece. Move it down and punch. Move, match your picture and punch. Move, match your picture and punch. And then move, match your picture and punch. Okay, and if you end up having just a little whisker, I have a little whisker here, so I'm just going to clip it with my with my microchip scissor. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to do is I've decided I'm going to switch the color on this because I don't think that that's showing up so well. So I'm going to switch that to a bronze shimmer. I'm going to switch my base to a bronze shimmer. And sometimes when you punch, you know, you have an idea and then after you punch it, and then after you put it on top of something, then you see how different it looks. So what a, what a beautiful way this popped it so much better on that bronze shimmer than it did on the white. So I'm gonna use the bronze shimmer as my base. 
Okay, now before we put it onto the base, what I wanna do is cut a two inch hollow frame out of the base. And the reason we do that is so that we don't have all that weight on our uh, albums. And we've got two pieces of paper here, and I want to be able to use some of this for mats or other, other items. I'm going to cut a two inch hollow frame. The reason is usually I do a one inch, but when I look at the size of the punch, I'm going to need a two inch in order to get that whole punch onto my base. Okay, so the two inch hollow frame, let's get our straight trimmer. And we're gonna need some binder clips for this. So if you have two small binder clips, let's put our paper in at the two inch mark on the left hand side. You can't put it at the two inch mark at the right side because it only goes up to an inch and three quarters. So let's go to the two inch mark on the left hand side, put your paper all the way to the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to line up our border, our binder clips. We're going to cut it at the two inch mark and we're going to make a two inch hollow frame out of the, your base. Now, when we look at our housing unit and this blue piece here that our blade is in is called the housing unit. When we look at the housing unit to the side, there's a little white line here on the blue unit. That white line shows you exactly where the blade is going to cut. And there is a one inch difference from the white line to the top of the housing and the white line to the bottom of the housing. So when we are trying to make a two inch hollow frame, what we need to do is move the bottom of our housing down to three inches. So the bottom of your housing, the bottom of your, your blue case goes down to the three inch mark and the marks are on the railings here of your trimmer. You see three inch mark right there. And I'm going to now take a binder clip and I'm going to put it at the top of my housing. Okay, so my binder clip is at the one inch mark. My housing, the bottom of my housing is at the three inch mark the blade is cutting at two inches. We're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. We need to get a two inch mark cut. So that means we need to have the blade stop at 10 inches. And you can see the 10 inches on the railing here. So that means our housing unit is gonna to have to come down to 11 inches. And we're going to now put the second binder clip in front of the housing. Okay, so you can see it's almost like putting up a little gate on your blade. So we're not cutting all the way through, we're actually stopping the blades at, uh, so that it will make a two inch hollow frame. Okay, and now we're ready to begin. So put your blade all the way up to the top, press down, I, I'm sorry, not all the way up to the top, to the top of that binder clip. Press down and come down to the next binder clip and lift up. Open your arm, turn to the right. Back up at the two inch mark. Again, press down and then lift up. And you're cutting between the binder clips. Turn to the right again, put it at the two inch mark, go back up, press down, come down to your binder clip, lift up, 
So you see what we're doing is we're making a hollow frame. Put that back in at the two inch mark. And now we're gonna cut our last cut there. Okay, and now you have a two inch hollow frame and you can remove your binder clips. And now that is what you're going to use as your base. And now we can go ahead and tape our frame, our pretty frame onto the base. Okay, I would use repositionable tape for this. Make sure that your base is centered right on your 13 by 13 mat. Okay. And you have a really nice eight by eight piece here that you can use and you can, this can be cut into uh, four, four by four squares. Um, the mats we're using on this is actually four by five. Okay, so let's go ahead and use our repositionable tape and let's put our repositionable tape at the edges of your frame. Normally we like to put tape all the way around, but don't forget we don't have a lot of, um, there's nothing in the middle there. So we have to make sure that whatever we are using will stay pretty close to that edge. Now I'm using a silicone mat. If you were, if you have one, you can use that because the tape does not stick on your table or on your other mat. You can also use parchment paper or you can use wax paper. Um, I like to use the pieces that um, after I'm done with the stickers, the sticker sheets, you can use those pieces. Okay, and when you're done with your tape, then go ahead and, uh-oh, I just put it down before I was ready. <laughs> That's why I like repositionable. I can just lift it up. Make sure your base is centered and then center this right in on top of your base. Okay, and now see, you have a two inch hollow frame here. So you're not wasting all of that paper that we cut out. Now the mats that are going in the middle here, um, we're going to need four mats measuring four by five. Four mats measuring four by five. Now, if that's if you want to make um, an even um, look here. On this other one, I actually use mats from the mat packs. So then I just adjusted the um, width of this one on the side. And similar for this, these are four by fours and this is a four by six. Okay, so your operative number is usually four inches, six inches, four inches, five inches that kind of a thing. And that's what will really fit right here in your middle. Now I have a bunch of scraps from my um, pieces here. So I'm going to actually just cut some four by five mats. This happens to be a piece that's uh, 12 by five and a half. This was just a piece that was left over. So if you have a 12 inch piece, you want to cut that then at the five inch mark. You have 12 inches, you're going to cut that at the five inch mark. And then turn to the side and cut three of them at the four inch mark. That's the best use of your paper. So you have three already done. And then if you have another, I happen to have another scrap here and I'm gonna do another four inches by five inches. Four inches by five inches. 
Okay, and now I am ready to attach these to the middle. And you, what you want to do is one is going to go horizontal, one is going to go vertical. So you're going to kind of play with it this way. Again, it gives it a little bit more interest. And then that way you can vary some of your pictures. Okay, and there you have that. And you're ready to go ahead and tape that down. So these are all four by five inch mats. And you just want to tape that right in the right on to your inner base and just center them. And then I'm going to show you a trick with the frame punch that you can do a pretty piece in the middle. Now with the frame punch, um, you can use anything in dimensions of two inches because the repeat on the punch is a two inch repeat. So that means that every two inches, you're gonna get the exact same uh, look. So if I want to do something um, in the middle, I can use something that measures four by four or something that measures four by six. So I, what I'm talking about is something like this. This started off as a four by six, and that can go in the middle. Or you can do a four by four and put that in the middle. So I will cut a four by four piece, and then we will uh, do that uh, together. Let me find a four by four with little piece here. Now that I changed colors, it um, <laughs> I have to scramble for my, my um, here we go, I can use this one. Okay, so um, this is actually good. I can do a four by six. So whenever you wanna do a frame, so we did a big frame here on this one, but the beauty of a frame punch is that it, you don't only need to do the big frame. You can do smaller frames like this, or you can do even smaller frames, or you can do a long frame um, like a four by 12. And here is a four by 12 with the same punch. Um, so you can do a long uh, border frame with that. And let's, let's see how we're going to do that. So I'm I'm going to do a four by six because I really like the way that it looks here in the middle. Or maybe we'll just do a four by four. Let's do a four by four. Okay, so this is a four by 12. This is a four by six. And I'm going to cut this piece to a four by four. So we need increments of two, two inches. Four inches is the smallest that you can use to make a small frame and you can go up to 12 inches so you can do a four by four you can do a four by six you can do a four by eight anything that's got increments of two okay so i have a four by four and what i'm going to do is the exact same technique that we did on our big picture out here, except this time I'm going to do it with a four by four piece. So I'm just going to mark these for you so you can see. This one was a four by 12. This was a four by six. So if you want to have a four by six picture and you really want to frame it, then you're going to want to do something like a six by eight or something like that because of the repeat of the punch. So in order to do this and to make that beautiful little piece inside and make that small, small border, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the four inch piece and now we're gonna line both edges to both lines on the shelf. So we're gonna center it directly in 
between those two lines on the shelf. Okay, and let's punch it. Okay, so now we have that one piece and we still have those two edges. Let's turn it. We're gonna put those two edges again to the outside, those two lines outside on the shelf. Okay, so now we have two edges. Turn it to the right again. Put those two lines to the outside on the shelf. Turn it to the right again. Put those two lines to the outside of the shelf. And now you have a beautiful piece here. And look at all your extra pieces for your frames. Okay, and this is a four by four. So that is a four by four frame. Isn't that pretty? Really, really pretty. And you can take this and put that right here in the middle of your page. Or it can also go this way. You could also use it as an accent piece up at the top, or you can even use it um, up here for another um, title, or you can use your four by six up here. Okay, so I'm just going to put it here and then maybe add a little embellishment there right in the middle, live joyfully. Um, I might put some hearts down the side there, and maybe I'll add some extra hearts on the edges, just like that. Okay, so that is our how to use a frame punch. Um, so I've given you Quite a few different ideas on using them. I've shown you a few different different ones. Tell me which one you like the best. I have Damask Flourish with the wedding. I've got the spider webs with the Halloween theme. I have a snowflake with the polar lights and the mandala with the boho escape exact same technique, but look how different it looks each time that you're using it. So I hope you enjoyed the technique today. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Bev De Bono Designs. I have, I think, over 70 videos on there of some fast and fun techniques that you can use for your scrapbook pages. Thanks again. Bye-bye.